Check. Check. Alrighty. From the 403 to the HA. Z. A remix. Okay. Hey, guys. Pre Cal 12. <sighs> Just finished phase one of trigonometry, pre Cal 12. That was, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen that stuff. And, uh, but that was good. We needed to kind of set that foundation before we start talking about waves. I love waves. My favorite thing in the world. Waves, baby. Um, waves are our friends. No. Um, so, understanding the unit circle and how sine and cosine change as we move around the circle sets the stage for visualizing that in a different manner on uh, using, uh, well, instead of talking about it, let me just show you, okay? So I'm just getting rid of all that stuff. So, Basically, we know that at any point on our unit circle, the coordinates are cos of theta, sine of theta, right? Um, because if, say, say if I'm at this angle here, which is pi over 3, or pi over 6, I mean, cos theta is that nice big root 3 over 2, sine theta is that smaller 1 over 2, right? That's what we were kind of doing in the last week. So any, any point on the circle, is sine theta, cos theta. That means that my x coordinates are always cos theta, or basically the, uh, the x component of my terminal arm, my terminal arm being any arm that extends out. So my x is always gonna be cos of whatever angle this is making, and my y is always gonna be sine theta. So what we can do is we can actually graph what each of those graphs looks like. So, I'm going to make a graph. Now, it's going to go, really, we're just going to focus on the positive x for now. Okay? Now, let's say I took a terminal arm, and I started right here at my initial arm point. Okay, and I want to just graph the graph of sine of theta. Okay, y is equal to sine of theta. Okay, and it's going to be a function of x here, where we're going. So, we know that we've got some points along the way. Um, I've got pi over 6, pi over 4, these are angles, right? Pi over 3. And it keeps going all the way around to pi, to 3 pi over 2 there. So I'm going to put the middle of my graph is going to be pi. It goes all the way to 2 pi. And I'm just going to, and I've got a few points along the way here, which are, um, I've got pi over 6. I've got pi over 4 and pi over 3. Okay. So let's graph, let's kind of start graphing what the value of sine of theta is, is as we move around. Okay, the value of sine of theta at zero is zero. There's no, there's no vertical component. So we start at zero here, at the origin. At pi over six, or at pi over two, at pi over two, so I wrote this wrong, I'm sorry. At pi over two, which is right here, At pi over 2, I max out. Sine of theta is 1. So it's 0 in the x, 1 in the, one in the y. So at pi over 2, I hit my max, which is going to be 1. Okay, I'm way up here. Okay, at x is equal to pi, my sine becomes zero again, so it comes right back down here. At x is equal to 3 pi over 2, my y becomes negative 1. Okay, so it goes at 3 pi over 2, I'm at negative 1. Okay, 
and at 2 pi, I go back to 0, okay? So when I grab, and then, so now I have some other points inside. So I can do pi over 6. At pi over 6, I'm at about uh, 3 pi over 2. Sorry, I'm at uh, 1 over 2. So I'm at about 1 half at pi over 6. And, and then at pi over 4, I'm at 1 over root 2. And then at pi over 3, I'm at root 3 over 2. Okay, so when I would actually graph all of these points, what happens is I get a graph that kind of looks like this, okay? There's my, sin, my y is equal to sine x. And this is a periodic wave, and it goes on forever. So as it can go into the negative, it can go into the positive. So this is y is equal to sine x. And it's just based on moving around our unit circle. It's just another way of demonstrating that unit circle. Now if I did cos of theta, y is equal to cos of theta, or cos of x, at x is equal to 0, cos of x is 1, right? My terminal arm is cos here. And basically it's going to follow, if I were to graph it, at pi over 2, cos becomes 0. There's no x component to the terminal arm when it's up here. And then down at pi, it becomes negative 1. Cos theta is negative 1 because it's negative x there. And so basically this graph just is kind of like the opposite of a sine graph because it's going in the different direction, okay? So that's what that graph looks like. So this, they should both be having a minimum and a maximum of 1 and negative 1, just at different times. So both of these graphs go on forever. This is sine theta, this is cos x. x theta is the same thing. And we deal with a couple um, terms for these graphs. I'm going to erase this. So the first thing that we're going to learn about is, and this is just an introductory video, I'm just showing you where these come from, because now we're going to start playing around with them. These are waves. We can stretch waves. We can amplify them. We can phase shift them, okay? So we're doing, we're gonna do all the same transformations we've done for every other function, and these are gonna be our baseline functions. But we need to know that, uh, we need to know a couple terms, and I'm gonna talk about them in the next couple videos. Period, these are periodic waves, which means that they just go on uh, forever in certain periods. Um, and the period is basically the length of, uh, or the, the, the length it takes for our wave to do one full rotation, or essentially for it to do one full rotation here. So starting at here, it needs to hit a max and a min and come back to the starting point. That is one full rotation, or AKA the period. So for our baseline functions, the period is two pi. That's how long it takes for both of these waves to hit a max, and a min and go back to the starting point. So our baseline period that everything is based on is 2 pi, just like our circle was, a, a one rotation was 2 pi. And then our amplitude, our amplitude is basically uh, our max minus our min divided by 2. Max minus min over 2. So for our baseline function, it's 1 minus negative 1 over 2 for an amplitude of 1. So our baseline period for our sine and cos baseline functions is 2 pi, and our starting amplitude is 1. Everything is going to be based on a transformation of those two things. So that's all I'm going to do for this video. And in the next video, we'll start talking about amplitude and period. And let me make sure I'm not forgetting any other concepts, important concepts. These are called sinusoidal waves. Any wave that basically fluctuates from a max to a min is called, or oscillates is called 
a sinusoidal wave, as long as it's crossing the kind of the center line here. So I think that, yeah, that's a good starting point. We'll talk soon.